Now, the remember. idea of censoring classic books is not a new one. We've seen it with Roald Dahl and Ian Fleming in the past, of course. James Bond. Um, I am Caleb Bond, not James Bond. But I'm putting my hand up if you want me for the next James Bond, by the way. But France's new culture minister has used her first session before Parliament to denounce the woke culture censoring classic works by Agatha Christie. Terms like oriental and gypsy and native have been removed from the latest prints in both English and French. But Rashida Darty says, we have to respect the freedom of creation. Every time I see one of these things happen, Liz, and you see it now, you go and watch a Disney movie or something, or you want to watch the old Looney Tunes and you know, they have a little warning at the beginning, oh, the, the culture was different back. We know that when we go to read it or when we go to... We don't mm. need it explained to us mm. or removed. It's a product of its time. Why can't we just accept that things are a product of their time? Well, the platforms, much like people on Twitter who say, oh, just because I share someone's opinion doesn't mean I agree with everything that they've ever said. And you're like, why do you even need to say that? So these, these platforms want to make this big disclosure of just because we're showing this film does not mean we endorse yeah. everything everyone says in it. It's pathetic. It's utterly pathetic. And what really riles me up, and I couldn't agree more with the new culture minister, is that the creators of these works, the authors of these books, have long since died. Yeah. And what business do you have then bastardising their work because... Decades after they passed, oh, we've decided that it's inappropriate to refer to a gypsy. I mean, which most people alive today wouldn't agree with in the first place. What is wrong with saying gypsy? In fact, if you know any gypsies or read about their history, they're very proud people. They're the first to tell you we are gypsies and you don't dare call us anything else. So I just find that very disappointing because what artist alive, whether you're a painter, whether you're a writer, would like to think that years after you've died, people go, oh, this painting's a bit inappropriate yes. now. We don't believe in wearing those kinds of dresses that girl looks oppressed in this. Let's just botch up the painting Precisely. and paint over Precisely. it. And that's, it's like, that's, that's my terrible. major issue with it because when you start interfering with art, and you know, art is an expression of emotion, it's an expression of culture, it's an expression of where the artist's mind was at that, at that point in time. When you start fiddling with that, you actually start dismantling the point of the art that has been created, mm. Joe, and you can turn it into whatever the hell you want. Well, that's not what it was designed to be. Yeah, I, I, this stuff is just terribly stupid and terribly creepy. I mean, the minute the government decides, starts deciding what art should and shouldn't look like, it's no longer art, it's propaganda. Yes, true. Um, you know, what are they going to say? Picasso's weeping woman looks a bit upset. It's probably because of his misogyny. Let's just paint it. <laughs> um, and, and again, but it's not only that, but as with so many things, such as, you know, putting all these sort of racial triggers in legislation that mm. then get used by the right or by white people who feel that they've been victimised. But again, it's something that is just going to come back to bite the supposedly progressive left again and again and again. And when you see the things that seem to be so triggering to them and they get so upset by and demand they get chained, the, the point that they actually get sort of triggered by it is the actual point. The point, yes. the point is that you wouldn't see tropes like, you know, Oriental or, yeah. you know, the N-word in Huckleberry Finn or whatever. The point is it is jarring. Mm. Yes, it reminds us exactly. of how far we've come, how much things have changed, and reminds us why or that it is not appropriate anymore. Right. The minute you start taking all that stuff out, mm. you're looking at a history... And, again, it's the same with pulling down, you know, Confederate statues or whatever. Yeah, so, sure. so what, what are you saying now? Oh, the South, you know, in some Orwellian world, you know, the South was, has, always, has, always will be, you know, a beautiful, progressive, <laughs> multicultural paradise. <laughs> you know, I, I don't you, understand why people can't just not read the books that they don't like. I know. If they I, find it offensive, don't, like, who the heck elevated these sooks into, into again, positions of power? Like, exactly. who... And, and Who did that? You, you think, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll erase the history and we'll erase the art and it doesn't exist anymore. I'm sorry, it will always exist and it needs to be there for a reason.